What the Heck Do I Know presents PM Update with Leah and Mia. And now your host, Leah. Hello, and welcome to the What the Heck Do I Know PM Update. I'm Leah. The top stories tonight in our project management fusion segment, exploring the 10 internal elements of project management and how knowing about them can help you be a better project manager. Also, does all of your business have mature or immature business processes? We have a story tonight about how mature practices affect the bottom line, why it is important even for the sales team to know about project management, and how one company made huge improvements with a few simple changes. Find out more on this segment of Project Management Fusion when we come back, so stay tuned. Hey there. I really enjoy making these videos and if you get value out of them or just enjoy watching, please hit like, subscribe, and feel free to leave me a comment. Welcome back. In our first story, Mia investigates the 10 internal elements of project management and how they helped one woman improve her project management prowess. Mary was new to project management just three short months ago. After successfully completing a few internal projects for her company, she was asked to manage a larger project that was a little outside of her area of expertise. Mary knew she was going to have to learn a lot more in order to impress her bosses and get her name in consideration for a promotion that was coming up. This is Mary's story. Mary knew that she had a lot of material to learn and wanted to make sure she could pass a proficiency exam to validate her training to her boss. She signed up for a class and purchased the latest copy of the Project Management Institute Project Management Body of Knowledge, or PMBOK, book. Mary's friend Max saw her reading the book at the local coffee shop and asked about why she was reading it. Max had also been meaning to learn more about project management and decided to take the class with her. Studying with a friend is always easier than doing it alone, so now seemed like a good time. At the start of the class, Mary's teacher introduced herself as Maud Morrison and gave a summary of the class activities. This morning, they would be learning about project integration management, which would give them the skills for putting together all of the documentation to coordinate all of the processes and project management activities within the other nine process groups. Then they would learn about project scope management, which would provide a framework for making sure all of the work required was accounted for in order to have a complete project at the end. In the afternoon, they would cover project time management so they can manage a project for on-time completion. Ending the day would be project cost management to learn about planning, estimating, budgeting, financing, funding, managing, and controlling costs to keep everything within an approved budget. On the morning of day two, she would cover project quality management to understand the process of determining what quality standards are needed for the project to get the desired end result. Then they would go into project human resource management to learn how to organize, manage, and lead the project team. Tomorrow afternoon, they would cover project communications management to plan, collect, distribute, and manage all of the project information. Then it would be project risk management to plan, identify, analyze, and control project risks. On the morning of day three, they will finally cover the last two, project procurement management to learn how to get products, services, and other things needed by groups outside of the project team, then on to project stakeholder management to identify the various groups that will be impacted by a project and analyze and manage the expectations of those groups. Most of the afternoon would be for individual study or question and answer with her, and they would take a test to evaluate their knowledge before the end of the day. Mary and her friend Max first learned about project integration management. This section covered the different kinds of project management documents, the information you need to start, how to get the information to build them, and what the end result should look like. This is the framework of the project and how it will be managed. They learned how to build the project documents and how to use them effectively. They created a project charter 
and the rest of the course would be building the elements of the project management plan. After that, the teacher explained about project scope management. They used the project charter they created in the first section of class, as well as some information for an imaginary project to create a scope management plan. They set rules for how they would define, validate, and control the scope. When the class broke midday for lunch, Mary and Max talked about the first day so far. They were both very interested to see how the rest of the day would turn out. The teacher covered project time management and had the class build a schedule management plan and set rules for how the schedule would be managed. Working with the sample data, they also built a schedule for their class project by defining activities, estimating durations and resources, and putting the activities into sequence. For project cost management, they built a cost management plan to provide a framework for all the money-related project items. At the end of the day, Mary and Max were very excited in all that they had learned, and Mary was already thinking of ways to use this information to build a schedule and budget for her new project. Mary and Max approached the teacher before leaving for the day. Max asked Maud if she would recommend the process she was teaching for all projects. Maud explained that on small internal projects, you can sometimes get away with just knowing what you want and expecting your team to do it your way. But as projects get larger or involve groups that don't work directly for you, it clarifies the work that needs to be done and the expectations and responsibilities of those other groups. It also prevents scope creep or people adding or changing things in the middle without proper authorization and funding. It can even help closing a project because how do you know when you're done when you haven't specified what work is required to consider it complete? First up for day two of the class is planning quality management and building their quality management plan. They learned the importance of setting relevant standards for the work to be done and the right kind of deliverables to validate the quality throughout the project in order to monitor and control. They incorporated the schedule and cost baselines they completed yesterday to use as checks for performance in those areas throughout the project. Next up was project human resource management. Maud provided additional mock info for their project and instructed the class to identify the skills and roles needed and then select a team from the list for their project. Mary and Max both thought that the interactive nature of the class was really interesting. It was almost easy using practical lessons to put everything together. The afternoon session started as promised with the project communications plan. They had reporting expectations they had to meet, so they had to decide what information to collect, store, where to keep it, and which personnel to assign to pulling it all together. The risk management plan exercise was even more interesting. The groups evaluated any potential risk for their imaginary project, performed qualitative and quantitative analysis of those items, and came up with potential responses for what to do if any of the risks were to happen. They created a risk register and put plans in place to mitigate the likelihood of some of the items listed from happening before the project even started. At the end of the day, Max thanked the teacher for a really interesting second day with all of the practical exercises. Mary pointed out that it seemed to her like having a good communications plan would be really helpful in avoiding or mitigating risks. The teacher agreed and mentioned they would be doing practical exercises again tomorrow. The teacher opened the last day of class with project procurement management. The students used all the previous data and plans to set up documentation for procurement decisions such as procurement statement of work, source selection criteria, make or buy decisions, awarding a contract, and change requests. They also wrote invitations to bid on bulk supply contracts and a quality review plan to verify materials received complied with the quality requirements before payment. For stakeholder management, the teacher provided a list of potential stakeholders to the groups that they had to identify who was and was not a stakeholder. Then they had to create a stakeholder register to rank them in terms of how important they would be to their particular project. They planned how they would keep stakeholders engaged and to get the top stakeholders to agree to a certain level of communication and required reporting 
then created a list of project personnel they could reach out to for specific types of questions. They also planned a weekly review meeting with the top stakeholders so that they could get their regular updates, ask questions of the entire project team, and be a part of the project management process. Using their lunch break to test each other, they both skimmed their book and asked questions while they ate. They were both feeling pretty confident and decided if they did well on the class exam, they would sign up to take the exam for certification. Mary and Max both scored over 80%, so they signed up to take the certification exam next week. Maud provided them with sample practice tests they could use to keep all the information they learned fresh before the next exam. Thank you for that inspiring story, Mia. I hope both Mary and Max get their certifications next week. Next up, when we return, a look at how your sales team having project management know-how can improve your bottom line. Stay tuned. Does your company have mature or immature business processes? Mia has the story of how one company made small process changes and ended up dramatically improving their sales. Frank is the number one salesperson at his company, but in the last six months, his numbers, along with everyone else on the sales team, have seen declining numbers. Frank was feeling particularly bad about Fred, his last potential client who informed him just that morning that he would be going with another company. Frank was sure that he and Fred had a good rapport and that he had provided all the necessary information in a timely manner and could not figure out what happened. The sales team manager, Phil, was under a lot of pressure to explain the declining sales to the owner, so he held a meeting with his team to get their feedback. Most of the team agreed that it was business as usual and hadn't noticed any changes other than they weren't closing as many sales as they were before. Frank suggested that the answer was actually outside the team, and while they have a method in place for gauging customer satisfaction with their services, they do not have anything for asking customers why they chose another company. Frank proposed sending a follow-up survey to every potential client that contacts them but does not purchase their services. The survey would allow the sales team to continuously improve and maybe even get ahead of the problems rather than reacting to them. The team all agreed this was a great idea and got to work building the survey. The sales manager got approval to send it out. The survey asked, were we too expensive? Not responsive enough. I do not need the services at this time. I need a larger team for my requirements. This is more than I need for my requirements. And finally, including an open text box for, how can we improve to get your business in the future? Phil got approval to send this out starting the next day to all potential clients that did not eventually sign with them. Even though the survey was supposed to be for new lost sales, Frank sent out the survey to Fred, not really sure if he would hear back. He was surprised when he received a call from Fred a couple of hours later. Fred appreciated the follow-up and genuinely liked working with Frank and wanted to help him out. Fred asked Frank how much he knew about project management and organizational maturity. Frank was a sales guy, so not very much. Fred asked Frank to meet with him after work for coffee and they set a time. Fred explained to Frank that even though their cost and capability were the same as most of the other businesses in the area, all of the information he received from them was provided only after it was asked for, and extra items that a customer might need but might not know they needed required several follow-ups with the sales team. It was also provided in text or copy and paste from a spreadsheet, which did not look very professional or official. This could lead some clients to think that their pricing was not consistent among all potential customers. Fred brought a printout of a sales information provided by two other companies. It had company logos, gave a range of options and price points, and even informed potential clients of all sorts of related options available. It also advised clients of additional items they might need, depending on their requirements, that would have to be arranged outside the company. The other companies just look more mature than yours. 
Frank was embarrassed by what he had provided after seeing how other companies made offerings. He thanked Fred for showing him and decided he was going to fix this first thing tomorrow morning. Treating it like a project management improvement initiative, Frank started with a standard pricing document and went through his emails and notes to check every question he had ever been asked by a potential client. By lunchtime, he built three comprehensive pricing sheets using a template with company logos based on what level of services a client was looking for and included add-on items that were commonly requested. Frank approached Phil with his draft pricing sheets and while Phil immediately saw that they were a better way to answer customer inquiries, he didn't really see how this would lead to many increased sales. Frank told him about the meeting he had with Fred the night before and how he had learned about organizational maturity. It was important for their customers to know that the sales team was just as mature as the rest of their organization, so customers could trust them to meet their needs. After considering, Phil realized that both Frank and Fred were right and brought Frank to the owner's office to discuss implementing these pricing documents and information strategies as soon as possible. When Flynn saw Frank's documents, he was impressed with his initiative. He asked Frank questions about how he put them together and asked Phil to collect additional sales data for him so he could look at providing even better value to their customers by bundling different commonly requested services. The project management teams and accounting would need to review the documents before using them, but as soon as they were approved, the sales team could start sending these out. Within a week, Phil's sales team was already closing more deals, and Frank received Employee of the Year at the company annual party, as well as a raise. The survey kept providing suggestions for other areas of improvement. Phil and Frank started a weekly review of customer surveys received from both new clients and potential clients they had lost. Not only were they able to make more improvements with the sales team, but also provided suggestions for other departments that were mentioned in the feedback surveys. The project teams were getting so busy that Flynn was hiring additional staff across the company to handle all the additional business. All in all, it was a great year for Frank after realizing the value of using principles taught in project management and organizational theory. What a great story, Mia. Frank is certainly the hero for that company. That's all for PM Update with Leah and Mia and our Project Management Fusion segment for this week. Thank you for watching and see you next time on What the Heck Do I Know and our next episode of PM Update. Good night. Hey, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I also love seeing comments.